one. This is Bronny. Every Wednesday from 6pm. The Bronny Show on KCC Live. What's up, you guys? You are listening to The Bronny Show, and I'm joined here with the one and only Noah Fence. Yes. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> I'm good. You? <laughs> so good. Yes. We uh, we both come back from tour. and um, Yeah. Both in Glasgow as well, which is insane. Yeah, no, I I realized I didn't realize that you were playing Glasgow the next day. I might have stayed up, but we we I played with Shikari the day before mm-hmm. you played with Area Eleven. That was that's mad. Yeah, that's great. I feel like everyone's on tour right now. Yeah, like no, this literally week, February. Everyone. Yeah, it's nice. Anyways, yeah, I'm so looking forward to this interview. Um, cannot wait to hear about your music journey and inspirations and everything, and you know, play some music games as well. All fun, all Hell fun. Yeah. Um, so to anyone that's been hiding under a rock, um, tell the listeners and the viewers more about yourself and your music. Um, I'm Noah. My artist name is Noah Fence, which is supposed so which is supposed to sound like no offense. Um, I've been making music for a good few years, kind of pop punky, kind of rocky. I also have been posting on YouTube for a good while. I used to post covers in there when I was like 15. Classic story. Um, but yeah, and no, I'm signed to Hopeless Records, and I'm I'm touring uh, the next, you know, in in October I'm touring the UK, and April I'm touring the US. Oh, amazing! Now, yeah, you've just finished touring with Enter Shikari. So, how was yeah. that? It was so fun. It was honestly, I, I, I don't, it's so difficult to compare like headline shows and like support shows. Um, but it was the first time I, I played a support show and I just had so much fun. Everyone was so nice. The crowds were really good. I was really worried that they would hate me. Um, cause like obviously I don't make the same music as Enter Shikari. Um, but yeah, I had a great time. Yeah, that's awesome. Now you've, well, not just, but like it's December time you announced your, um, second, usa headline tour in april yeah. so how excited are you for that i am so happy for you i fucking love i am America. i'm so excited for that i taught there i taught there last june but there were so many hiccups like the bus didn't have air conditioning so i had heat exhaustion for like three weeks it gets um, so hot in the summer doesn't it yeah it's it was insane. like 40 degrees in texas oh no no, no air conditioning oh, um but no nah, i'm really excited this time around um I've got like I know what team I like touring with now. Mm-hmm. Um, so everybody that we're bringing over, we're all like really good friends. So it's just going to be a family holiday, and it's with Bears and Trees, who I love. I, I'm really good friends with them too, and then Action Adventure as well. And I love their music, so I'm I'm just really excited. Oh, amazing! I feel like you picked a good time to tour as well, April, because it either it gets super cold in the yeah. winter, and then yeah. like so hot in the summer. Um, yeah. I've been sat Googling temperature and temperatures yeah, yeah. in each states in April just, <laughs> just to prepare for it. Yeah, just to be safe. What what cities and states are you kind of most excited for? God, well, so Jesus. That so we're playing twenty two shows. So there's like a there's like a lot to look forward to. Um I really enjoyed New York last time. Just as like just to, to America is full of places where you have to drive everywhere if you want to get anywhere. Um, and New York was nice because you could just walk places. But um, I'm really excited for Atlanta, I think. That's the first show on the tour. And there was such a good good crowd like last year. Um, and Seattle as well, because we didn't play there last year. And I've never been to Seattle. Oh, and, I you know, love Havana, Seattle. Seattle. They have um, this mass. It's called like, oh, what is it? It's like the pop culture or something museum. And it's got loads of, like, original, like, Nirvana gig posters and, like, original Nirvana merch and Pearl Jam and all that. You've got to go. No, I'm I'm writing that down. I've got a list of things to do with them there. Um, So, I think it's time to play our first music game. This is Would You Rather Musician Edition. Would you rather... Right, number one is, would you rather never play an instrument ever again or never sing and songwrite ever again? I'd have to say, oh, but oh, I hate that. Um, I love playing instruments so much, but if I couldn't sing and songwrite, then I couldn't do any of what I do. Like, I guess, mm-hmm. I guess if I couldn't play an instrument i could just like hum out <laughs> what i want yeah. whoever who's playing for me to play i'd rather not be able to play an instrument again but that sucks because yeah. I, I really love it it's 
sweet. So number two is, would you rather play sold out 100 cap rooms like all around the world in crazy intimate venues and play whenever you want or play sold out stadiums twice a year wherever you want in the world? I think 100 cap venues. Mm-hmm. I like, it's it's interesting because I, I hadn't played bigger than, the biggest show on my last tour was like 900 cap. And that to me was like massive. And then on the Shikari tour, we just played 2000 um, in London. Wow. And that was insane. And that was really fun for like different reasons than like a hundred cap show would be. Um, but I really enjoy being able to interact with people. And I feel like stadiums, you can't really do that as much. I mean, if, if, we're, if we're talking like logistically, I would have no money left if I was doing a hundred cap shows all over the world. <laughs> um, if it was just about money, it would be the stadium shows, but I think it, it would be really cool to just see what different audiences are like in the 100 cap shows. Oh, 100%. I f- it's so mad because so many different bands say different answers because you've got like stadiums, you know, you got your yeah. lasers, you got your very yeah. good catering as well, all about the catering. I love it whenever you go on tour with bigger bands, it's like, oh my god, we don't just have hummus and carrots. This is like <laughs> insane. <laughs> Now, this is my favorite one to ask people. So, you can only listen to one decade's worth of music forever. What decade are you gonna pick? But I'm gonna change the rules here. You can you can use like 1976 to 1986, you know that. A 10 year uh, gap, yeah. Okay, um, okay. Oh, this is hard. I think 2002 until 2012. Cause oh, 2002, yeah. um, yeah, I think 2002 to 2012, maybe 2004 to 2014. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't want to miss out on any My Chemical Romance. Um, That's a thing, yes. I got to do that. Um, but then also like Collide with the Sky, Pierce the Veil is 2012. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't want to miss out on that. But then I love Nirvana. I'm on a real, I, I had my first Nirvana phase when I was 12 and I'm coming back into it. Oh, that's yeah. hard. I'm just gonna, maybe, maybe to, just 2002 to 2012. Final. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I, I'd say I'd say mine is like ninety four to two thousand and four. But then, yeah, Welcome to Black Parade was that two thousand and five. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but you, get, no. you get three cheers. You get three cheers. Okay, I'll which take I think that. is I I prefer three cheers. Yeah, I love that album so much. But yeah, oh, what a band! Have you ever seen Mike Cam live? Yes, yes. Oh my god, I saw them. I saw them last year. Uh, in Milton Keynes, a oh, day before same. I left for my US tour. You were there? Yeah, wait, was it the second what? date? I think it was a Sunday. Maybe we were there. Maybe we were there together. That's yeah. mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh my God. Um, but I saw, I saw them then, and then I, I, I flew to Vegas for when we were young first, because I saw the lineup announcement, and I was like, I've mm-hmm. just, I just got to go. So I saw them there as well, and that was insane. Oh, amazing. What good festival lineup as well. Paramore was, and everyone and oh. we were literally like two rows from the front from Paramore it was crazy so Avril Lavigne neck deep the story so far yes, just like Jimmy Eat World like it was mad yeah oh you love neck deep uh, I like yes neck deep were my favorite band for like years and years I've got the lifestyle to get you wall flag uh, in my bedroom and I've had that since I was like in boarding school mm-hmm. uh, and in every single room that's always gone up next to a story so far wolf flag yeah oh, oh that's just such a good band I remember yeah. I was in when life start to get, uh, get you came out I was in a hot topic somewhere in America and I never really heard of them yeah but their t-shirts and the CDs and the vinyls were everywhere and I was like okay I'm gonna get into this band and I'm yeah. Welsh and I'm half Welsh so I was like okay oh, this yes is, this has got to happen. Um, yeah, so I was obsessed with them for years. And then I got to play with them at their Wrexham show a few years back. So That's so cool. That's great so dudes, cool. great dudes. Um, mm. So do you know what? I feel like we kind of started out on a similar path with music because you were saying that you did YouTube covers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and vlogs and all that. Mm, well, I never did vlogs. That was like... Right. I, like, vlogs isn't... I, I consider vlogs to be like, oh, here's what I'm doing today. Here's me at 9 a.m. Here's me mm. at 10 a.m. I never did that. I would just post like videos of me playing Bring Me the Horizon songs on ukulele and then post stupid like Q&A videos. Mm -hmm. So what what inspired you to start YouTube then? Like was it any specific musicians or was it, I don't know, just YouTubers or? It was honestly nobody that was, uh, I don't, (laughs) I wasn't inspired by like any influencers or YouTubers. The only reason that I ever posted on YouTube was because 
at that point, um, I was starting to grow an audience on Instagram from posting covers. Um, mm -hmm. And that was back when you could only post 15 second videos. So the only reason that I posted on YouTube was because like I couldn't post the full video anywhere else. Um, and then some of my videos just started doing really well on there. So I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'll keep posting. And you built such an amazing, you know, fan base um, on YouTube as well. So mm. I was watching all your videos. I was like, yes, ah, loving it, loving sick. it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I always find this super interesting, like whenever I meet bands or artists for the first time. So in two minutes, give me the whole sum up of your music journey from, I don't know, being a kid with any certain bands you were really into and then YouTube and then what happened after that? Yes. Oh my God. So, uh, Jesus, since I was a kid, I have like really old home videos of me like singing, I love rock and roll, like naked in my garden. <laughs> Uh, so maybe that was like the first thing for music. Uh, the first band I was obsessed with was Busted when I was like four or five. And they were my mm -hmm. first ever concert with McFly supporting. Um, so that was insane. I remember being there being like, mom, why is everyone screaming? I can't hear them. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I mean, apparently I used to cry when my parents wouldn't play Green Day in the car. Um, and then I'd say like, I really started properly getting into into music when I was like 9, 10, 11, 12. Mm -hmm. uh, Fall Out Boy had been my favorite band since when I was nine until I was like 14. Um, and they were the first band where I would like Google all their lyrics and be like, mm -hmm. oh, what does this mean? And like compare them. Yeah. Um, and then after that, really got into like My Chemical Romance. They're the reason that I picked up a guitar and like taught myself guitars because I love Frank Iero. Um, so that was that was the whole emo phase. I was so obsessed with them and then got into Pierce the Veil and Bring Me the Horizon and Of Mice and Men and had a Nirvana phase. Um, As everyone really... does. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, and I'd been having, having drum lessons since I was like 10. So I was really into that kind of thing. And I feel like the way I write music now, it all comes from like having a drum brain. Like mm -hmm. everything is rhythm for me. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I was, I'd been teaching myself guitar uh, since I was like 14, 15, then started posting videos of YouTube of me playing ukulele and like little covers. Um, and then maybe when I was like 15, 16, I started like writing music for myself, um, like lyrics and instrumentals, um, had, had a band with my friend, which didn't really work out. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, got signed to management. Um, and they were like, oh, you want to make music? And I was like, yeah, I do, but that sounds scary. They're like, don't worry, we'll do it. You, you just, you just made the music. We'll do whatever you want with it. Mm -hmm. And then got signed by Hopeless pretty quick. That Congrats, was, out by the way. way. Thanks. Yeah. That was, that was insane. Cause they're like full of, they, they signed all my favorite bands. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, yeah, I got signed in COVID, did my first tour, did my first show July, 2021. My second show was supporting McFly at a festival. Which is like this whole like this whole Full thing because like moment. my exactly like yeah. they were the first gig that I went to. Um, played Slam Dunk, did a tour in the UK, did a tour in the US, did my second tour in the UK last September, and sold out Islington Academy. Um, and yeah. then yeah, heading to the US soon. Amazing! I love that. That is one of my favorite sum ups. Um, oh, yeah. of a career loving it um <laughs> so yes yeah, so we were just talking about all your inspirations and favorite bands have you been able to meet any of them yet or have you ever been starstruck on tour or anything or so yes so um i you know big my chemical romance stan i had a my chemical romance fan account on instagram that's before i started posting covers that was please how I... say it's still active and go with uh, it. it's not the account <laughs> that i have now is an old my chemical romance fan account Oh, like no the, way! It's, yeah, like, it's the same account. Um, but yeah, I met Frank Iero, I think in 2014, 2015, when he was touring the UK for Frank Iero and the Celebration. Um, so I met him, and I was 14 and really awkward, and he said he liked my Drop Dead Itchy and Scratchy hoodie. Um, I so I was, like, starstruck then, but I've met, like, a good few people in bands that I listened to, and they've all been, like very normal so it's, mm -hmm. it's been quite difficult to be like starstruck because i feel like the way that i meet them is not in the general sense of like oh i'll buy vip tickets and it's more just like oh, oh you're part of my label or like yeah. oh we'll write a song together um but yeah i'd say frank iero that was a big one if i was gonna get starstruck by any musician it would be dave grohl <gasps> yeah. dude same fucking yeah. love dave grohl if Actually, i met him i'd like that would just be the best thing ever i i would burst into tears 
yeah yeah forever and ever the end mm. it's yeah. yeah it's oh god whenever i lack inspiration or i'm just having a shit day and i'm like yeah. i'm gonna watch some dave Grohl, like his interviews oh i have love you seen the foo fighters back and forth documentary yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. my favorite ever ever band documentary it's insane oh he's lovely you and i are one i'm <laughs> loving it <laughs> um so in fact how would you describe your music and your vibe to new people i see it's like it's uh how do i do that um it's kind of like rock influenced bit of pop punk in there um but also a bunch of like weird electronic glitchy stuff I have real bad ADHD, so if I had to describe it to someone, I'd be like, it's pop punky, rocky for people with ADHD who have no attention spans. Love um, it, yeah, with a sprinkling of ADHD yes. on top, yes. Exactly, because yeah. <laughs> like, I don't like writing two verses that sound the same or mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Like every part of my song will have like something different in it. Um, That's what I love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I have a short attention span, so I need to make music that like yeah. isn't boring to me. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. So... Yeah, I, I, in fact, I have to say your song "Life's a Bit," "Life a Bit" is my jam. Um, but yeah, oh, I was yeah. Uh, jamming to it on the car ride home. I was like, "Yes, I love this." Um, That's fun. What What are some of your favorite songs that you've released? Um, I honestly think I really like "La La La." Um, that's my most recent single. That was like. <laughs> I wrote that in between coming back from the US and doing the last UK tour. Um, and I got back from the US and I was told that I needed to write a song within like two weeks and have it completely like mixed, mastered, like Shit. all that done. Yeah. And I was stressed as hell and I didn't know what to do. And then we, I ended up writing that song and I was like, oh, okay, pressure's off. I love this. Yeah, what um, a song to come out with as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah but um, pr probably La 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 or Worms or Tell Me That You're Okay. Those three. <laughs> nice. Well, I'll be playing those on the show. Um, so it is time for your song of the week. Song of the week, song of the week. Yeah. So oh. it can be a song that changed your life, a guilty pleasure, a song by a favorite band or artist, or, you know, a, a favorite childhood memory or something. What is your song of the week? I, <laughs> one of my favorite bands right now is The Oozes. Um, and I ended up bringing them on tour with me in the last UK tour. They have a song called Strap that's new. Uh, so I'd say that just because it bangs. Nice. It's just really good. And the lyrics are funny as hell. I love them. Oh, awesome. I'll have to check it out for sure. Um, now, you recently released a bango with the Tyne. Love them. Um, yeah, Mega Tune. Um, I toured with them like last year with the Lunar oh, Year. Um, yeah, when, when did you meet them? I met them, Jesus. So they were they were supposed to tour with me for my first UK tour in 2021. Oh right. But um, but they they all managed to get COVID. Um, oh no! And that didn't end up happening. I think the first time I met them in person, when would that have been? I think it may have been last May, um, because I did a show in Southampton and they supported me there. Um, so I think it would have been them. But I, I think I'd spoken to them before, like online. Oh, sick, yeah. Um, no, they're ace. They're so sweet, aren't they? They're they're so sweet. They're just lovely. They're mm. so nuts. Um, so chat about your career. What would you say is like your biggest kind of milestone or like favorite moments of your career so far? Jesus. I mean, there's obviously like getting signed with Hopeless, but I feel like that that's more the start. Um I think playing the first night of the O2 Islington Academy sold out. That was just like the best thing ever because I'd been like waiting to play it for ages. We were supposed to play in January and it got canceled because of COVID and I had to wait so long. And then when I did eventually end up playing it, I was so nervous that I threw up before I went on stage. But as soon as oh I went God, on stage- Oh my God, bless you. Yeah, oh. it was, I was, I was so anxious. But when I got on stage, I was like, oh my God, my like entire irish side of the family were there my two little cousins who were like 10 and 8 years old were sat like in the pit at the front with my aunt Love um, it. and then like my everybody who was on the tour came on stage for like a stage invasion and 
it was just a really fun show. They were like, I had so many friends in the crowd and it was just, it was really nice seeing them all come together just for this one thing. Cause I, I usually am just like, oh, you know, I've got this thing. Don't bother. Mm -hmm. It's fine. You don't have to come, yeah. but they all bought tickets. Um, so yeah, that was really nice. Oh, that's awesome. It is the best feeling because obviously like when you're on tour, like, you can't see your family all the time and your mates, oh, yeah. but when they're in the crowd, it makes it yeah. so special, doesn't it? It's great. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Um, amazing. So is there anything else you'd like to add? I, I'd just like to add, if you're listening from America, even <laughs> this is Liverpool, buy a ticket to my show in America. If you're listening in the UK, look out for announcements, maybe. <laughs> who knows? Who yeah, knows? who knows? <laughs> So where can everyone else find you online or, you know, on Spotify? And Yeah, so uh, you can find me everywhere if you just type in Noah Fintz. It's just N-O-A-H-F-I-N-N-C-E. Um, I'm on YouTube, I'm on Spotify, Instagram, Twitter, all of that. Just just type in Noah Fintz and you'll find me. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being on The Bronny Show. I've had Thanks a blast. <laughs> Thanks for having me. This is Bronny on KCC Live. Follow Bronny everywhere at Bronny Music.